Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this week's Green Eggs and BAM, uh, thought-provoking sustainability discussions with national thought leaders as we explore how to create the next new normal, one that creates a sustainable, just, and resilient world. Everything has changed around us because of this pandemic. What was normal a few months ago, six months ago, is no longer. COVID-19 has disrupted almost every facet of our life, and we don't have all the answers. So we're inviting people like Dr. Elizabeth Bagley to explore how to create a just, thriving, and resilient nor norm new normal with us. And because Green Eggs and BAM started as like breakfast time discussions in person, and we're shifting to an online format, we're going to send you a bag of Artemis Teas, a locally owned tea company here in Omaha, Nebraska, to support local businesses. So I'm Daniel Lossi, Chief Century Thinker at Verdus Group here in Omaha, Nebraska. We're a sustainability consulting firm helping organizations across the country become more resilient. And our special guest today is Dr. Elizabeth Bagley. She's the director of Drawdown Learn at Project Drawdown. And one thing that I love about Elizabeth is that she designs experiences and initiatives and tools to connect people with researched, relevant, and relatable information that have impactful climate action. Research relevant, relatable, like she drilled that into me. We've taught classes together at the Sustainability Institute in West Virginia. And I've known Elizabeth now for a couple of years and I'm just so thrilled to have you on today to hear what you're thinking about in this intersection of the pandemic and climate action. Can you give us a, a elevator pitch of Project Drawdown for those who are not familiar with this wonderful organization? Absolutely, and thanks so much, Daniel, and the whole Veritas Group team for having me on. It is such a pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, so Project Drawdown uh, started back in 2014, and really the focus of the group is to be the world's leading expert on climate solutions. Uh, back in 2014, and still even today, there was a lot more focus on kind of doom and gloom. What are the problems that are causing climate change rather than what are the solutions? Like, what can we do? What do we have in hand today that we can put into place to help reach this moment in time? It's a scientific term called drawdown, which is the moment in time when the heat trapping gases in the atmosphere start to slowly and steadily decline instead of increase like they have been for, for too long. So at Project Drawdown, we have a team of researchers uh, and they scour the landscape to find what are the most viable solutions out there in the world today that we can scale up and put into place all over so that we can reach drawdown and that we can work together to create this thriving, resilient world that Veritas Group is working towards every day. Awesome. I love your work. So with the pandemic and all the disruption that's been occurring from it, how has your work at Drawdown changed or the solutions that people are looking for? Has anything changed? Yeah, it has. And I mean, I think, you know, there's uh, a lot of alignment between what we're seeing with the pandemic and climate change. I mean, people have probably seen uh, cartoons looking at how the pandemic is, is this um, very current thing that we're thinking about, but just behind the pandemic is this looming wave of climate change that is waiting to really um, engulf and envelop everything that we know and really shift so many of the systems. So what's changed at Project Drawdown is we're really thinking about where are the strategic partnerships that we want to put into place to really ensure that uh, companies, that's through our Drawdown's lab, uh, Drawdown Labs initiative, and that just launched in March, um, that companies, that communities, and that's what I work on with Drawdown Learn, um, and, uh, and people all over the world are prepared to put climate solutions into action instead of just talking about it or not talking about it like uh, the vast majority of the world is, is not yet really talking about climate solutions. How do we prepare them with the not only just the information because we know that in on its own is just information right that's not actually leading to action but how do we create these pathways to action so that people are putting climate solutions into place uh, in place, in the places that they love, the places they live, the places that they care about, so that we can really reach that moment in time uh, drawdown. So with all these solutions that you, and, and thinking about the strategic partners you're working with, what are you finding 
that is being accelerated because of the pandemic, if anything? And are you seeing some things being kind of let go of or pushed to the side because people are just buckling down and focusing on the essentials? One of the things that we are kind of shifting towards at Project Drawdown, which I think is partly just a shift in the collective consciousness and kind of the collective culture uh, globally, is shifting away from numbers and throwing you know facts and figures at people and we kind of we can see this kind of analogy in an analogous way with the pandemic right like what do um million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent uh, avoided what does that actually mean and to a, to an everyday person it doesn't mean a whole lot and that can be similar to some of the numbers we are seeing thrown around about coronavirus and so we're really shifting to telling stories so what we're seeing like with COVID-19 is that what um people are gravitating towards are the stories, right? Stories of healthcare workers, stories of those frontline workers who are putting solutions into action. And that's what we need for climate too. We need stories. We need to make sure that people can see themselves as agents of change and be part of this global movement. So that's some of the work that we are really focusing on now. We are about to hire a manager of storytelling, which is a pretty awesome uh, title. So somebody who will work with, with me and with our, um, our editor-in-chief of our Drawdown Review to find stories, surface stories at all levels of agency so that we can see ourselves reflected in those solutions on the ground and so that we don't have to start at zero, but the, we can actually start at you know a higher level and really hit the ground running with blueprints and inspiration to put those solutions into action. Wow. So with stories, I'm sure you're you're seeing the connection that people have with values, right? We can connect to other humans and their values. And then that can be a big driving force for motivation. And what this reminds me of is when you actually gave a presentation to the Omaha and Lincoln crowd a couple months ago in the middle of the pandemic, and you talked about the co-benefits of climate action. Are you seeing any change in the way that we're talking about or telling stories about climate action and co-benefits because of the pandemic and the public health perspective, because of the, the uh, systemic racism that so many people have lived, but others is just becoming, they're be just becoming aware of it. So what have, what have you seen with co-benefits and how we're telling stories for climate action and co-benefits? Absolutely a huge shift towards aligning to co-benefits that climate solutions are rarely just climate solutions, right? They're not just uh, fixing a problem related to climate, but they're also making life better on a number of other fronts. So what we're seeing uh, with COVID is we're seeing a lot of talk about biodiversity, right? We hear a lot about how the decreasing biodiversity, especially in places where these viruses are emerging, is part of what's, what's created this global pandemic. And so how can we have climate solutions that are also biodiversity solutions? And that's where our solutions framework is really helpful for me to think about, okay, so when we think about the solutions that we're putting into place, there are kind of three buckets of solutions. Um, Daniel, you already talked about kind of the three R's that I like to talk about, research, relevant, and relatable, but the three uh, pillars of climate solutions have three S's. I really love the, um, <laughs> the groups of threes. And the three S's of solutions are sources. Uh, so what are the sources of those heat trapping gases and how can we reduce those sources? First S is sources. Second S is sinks. How can we support nature's sinks? What nature already does really well. And that's where, especially the co-benefits from biodiversity really take root, right? So sources, sinks, and the third is society. How can we improve society? And that's where a lot of the, um, the equity concerns come in, right? How can we make sure that climate solutions are implemented in just and equitable ways so that we have a just transition as we transition from these broken systems that we're living in right now to the systems that we all deserve to live in? And how do we write the next chapter of life on earth so that it is more just, it is more equitable, and we uh, can you know, thrive and be resilient uh, with both people and the planet. Wow. So sinks, sources, and society. And, and may I just jump in and say you have four S's because the fourth one is stories. That's how you are communicating these strategies that are proven solutions today. 
and, and, and solutions. Oh my gosh, we're going to go on an alliteration mess right there's now. There's a lot of S's. There's a lot, yeah, you said, yeah, there's a lot lots of S's. Of S's. I Strategy, love it. Strategy, <laughs> solutions, stories. So uh, what, this reminds me of one quick story uh, where we started here in Omaha and climate change was not something you talked about in 2009. But people really cared about saving money. So we went in and we started doing sustainability work with big organizations big local employers and they're like help us save money on utilities we're like great oh and by the way it's going to also reduce greenhouse gas emissions they weren't so concerned about that but over the last i think the last five years or so we've noticed a huge shift in our clients who are saying yes we need to save money this is important but it's not what they're leading with they're leading with the value of this is important it's the right thing to do and we want to be community leaders and oh by the way it's going to save money and it's going to help us on, on some of these number crunching things that you still have to show things with numbers. Um, but it was the stories of some of the leaders going and visiting China and seeing the smog in some of these cities or the stories of one woman's son who was doing a lot of sustainability work in California. And she's like, I'm not gonna let my son one up me in the healthcare industry. So we're gonna do this here in Omaha. <laughs> and it was really fascinating to watch the transformation from sustainability is just about saving money to it's about doing the right thing. And it was the stories that transformed that. So in the last couple minutes, what opportunity or strategies for creating the new next normal that's just resilient and thriving should we prioritize? And what's it gonna take to launch these? Well, I think starting with, and I keep coming back to the framework, you know, the multiple S's that we've now, we've now added to, which I love the uh, adding the S's. Um, really thinking about where can we, where can we as individuals, as communities, as business leaders, where are we best positioned to make change, right? So what Project Rodon has done over, over the last few years is really find the, uh, and we have about 80 to 100 solutions that are out there today that need to be done, right? And it's not to say that one is necessarily better or worse than the other. It's this mosaic. It's this um, complete mosaic of interconnected solutions. And we need all of them implemented as quickly, as safely, and to our earlier points, as equitably as possible. So what I'd love to see is kind of this call to action around um, people stepping back and saying, okay, where can I, you know, which of these solutions are the next best step on my sustainability journey or on my climate journey? And using Project Rawdown, as a guidepost or as uh, as a guidebook to understand that nobody has to start at zero here are the solutions where do you want to start right and then bringing people together to actually ripple out those solutions and the impact felt from from the solutions in action so i'll just put a plug in daniel for our website drawdown.org where we've got our latest publication the drawdown review which came out in march love and that one. we have some Thanks. Yeah. Um, what do you love about it? I love how it has boiled them down to simple ways of taking action. And you even have a part in the back that talks about, uh, is it the catalyst for accelerating yeah, action? Yeah, yeah. That's exa I was going to mention that, Daniel. I'm glad you, uh, you made it to that part. So yeah, for those folks who don't normally read to the end, please read uh, to the end of the drawdown review where we have a bunch of accelerators, like what's going to be needed to actually scale these solutions. and um, and so hopefully that will be helpful in your, you know, in your communities in putting these solutions into action. Thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth Bagley with Project Drawdown. <laughs> I love how you summarize that with take a step back and ask yourself the question, where can I and my organization have the biggest impact? And this reminds me of what we were talking about before the call, which was you started asking yourself, where should I spend my time and energy? Because we all have limited time and energy individually and at our organizations. And so if we can ask that question as it pertains to climate action, and we can use Project Drawdown as this well-vetted framework of solutions that we have today, then we can create a new next normal that's just resilient and thriving. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And I hope everybody takes a look at the Drawdown review. It's a relatively short PDF and it's chock full of information. And if you have any questions or want to partner with Drawdown, Project Drawdown for education, community change, community action, reach out to Elizabeth or anybody on the Project Drawdown team. 
thanks so much for joining us for Green Eggs and Bam and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for having me.